Sure, come in here, don't come in here, whatever you guys want to do. Hello, you people on the YouTube. I'm here with Red7. Yeah. Red7 Amplifiers. Yeah, correct. I'm Luca. Hi. It's Luca. Hi. Strange <laughs> last name, Luca. <laughs> yeah, correct. This is only video number two and the mask is bugging the living crap out of me. Yeah. But what can you do? Well, nothing. Uh, you have to wear it and that's what we do because we're responsible adults in Italy, right? Correct. Correct. 100%. We have fun. Hello. <laughs> People filming us filming. So, uh, Red7 amps uh, look cool. Thanks. Before we talk about Red7 amps, we talk about Red7's box, uh, which is apparently an IR load, uh, uh, resistive load, res reactive yeah. load, yeah. that one, I don't, what do I know? Um, and I walked up here and said, guys, why is this cool? Why, why is this better or more relevant than the Captor X? Not because I'm a big two notes supporter. Uh, if it's a good product, it's a good product. And you can piss off Guillaume if you have a problem with that. <laughs> No, no, I love you. I, I love you. Come, shut up. But I said, why is this better? First of all, well, it has a stereo out because it has a stereo effects loop, which is cool. So you can actually, all right, uh, breathing. You can plug in your classic amp, big ass, flexi, and then put a stereo effect behind it, which is way cool, which is sitting behind the IR. So that's cool. Of course, it goes through to your amp and all that stuff. But Luca sold me on the idea that this actually sounds, in terms of the reactiveness, better than all other products. Obviously, he has to say that because I was going to say he's wearing the Red 7 shirt, but he isn't even wearing a Red 7 shirt. <laughs> so he's literally saying that because he believes it. Absolutely, 100%. And uh, yeah, correct what you said. The, um, the reactive load is the, um, the analog side. So it's what uh, we think. It's the better statement, the best sounding part of this box, okay? Uh, we can't compete with other competitor on the software side. That's, that's difficult. Yeah, yes. Uh, it's a clever decision according to us and we didn't want to fight that battle. So we concentrate on the analog side and extra features like MIDI, okay? And like you say, the, the loop effects. If you have your vintage amplifier or single channel or something you really love and you really love to play in stereo, okay? We place also a stereo loop effects uh, after the input response, like the big guy uh, back in the days, maybe Michael Landau and stuff like that, do it with the big rocks. So... Uh, Dave Friedman does it at the NAMM show all the time. Friedman amp, and then dry in the middle, and two 412s with a big stereo rack, and everyone's in the Friedman booth like, oh my God, it sounds so great. Yeah, Dave. You're cheating! <laughs> no, it actually, that's, it, it's a good it's way, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, according to us, that should be the only way to listen an amplifier, okay? It's not very practical, so we came up with this idea. And think about your vintage plexi, uh, load it down, so maybe on 10 with a, a nice stereo delay, okay? And the spread of the modulation, everything you want in stereo, you could have in total silent way, so I think it's a pretty impressive thing. I mean, I'm just thinking now as a reviewer, I review quite a few stereo effects. And when I do that, I do go through um, some kind of model. I go through the ACS-1 or maybe the Iridium because it's easier. Okay. I can hook it up. I mean, sometimes I go into the AUX and the two notes studio and two amps, but that's a shit ton of work. This would allow me to actually use a real amp like my Tone King and still demo the stereo effect. So now, now for me, I'm starting to see why this is worth 200 bucks more than the Captor X. I'm still not sure about the just loading one IR and being happy with it, but if you have the one IR you're happy with, then you have the one IR you're happy with. Let's talk about amps. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get some B-roll and throw that in. So we're gonna talk about the duality you said this is. Yes. Why is that so cool? Uh, First of all, because it's a Red 7. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Easy. Good. 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 See, easy, absolutely. Yeah. Good guy, he, know, he knows how to answer. Give him a shot, man! <laughs> no, that's our workhorse. Uh, it's the big name, the Dwight 100. And that's the, the resume of the, best, the, the three best sounding, so uh, a clean channel, uh, what we call a vintage channel from 70s plexi panel amplifier to a more modern sound and the third sound which is our modern channel it's uh, our take on the high gain sound it's a literally packed 
of features like gain boost, double master, MIDI, everything like that. And pretty much impressive how the master volume works in this amplifier. You literally have your uh, sounds from 0.1 to 10, always consistent, and you could only be happy about this amplifier, really. We spent almost two years in development, in refinement, and we are so happy. Now the amplifier is uh, like that since probably other two years, and it's the most uh, complex effort we made. The tubes are the big ones. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the, you guys know the big tubes? They are the, uh, I mean, they're clearly 6L6s. No, they're 34s. Yeah. 30. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're tubes, the, the big ones. You also have the little ones. I can totally see little ones. And there's a, oh my God, there's one, two, three, four, five, six little ones. Probably some for gain and some for effects loop and some for electronic -y words that I don't know. I don't know, uh, equalization, something, terra terraforming. Everything you need. <laughs> The, the, the most cool part of this amplifier is uh, it's an actual three-channel amplifier and second and third channels have shared EQ so they are not like a, a boosted version of channel two speaking of channel three they are actual three channels which is something you you can't find uh, every day in an amp like that it, it definitely looks like a high grade Italian amp. You can always kind of spot the Italian amps. <laughs> there's something about whether it's Mezza or whatever they're called. They, there's there's some kind of design aesthetic yeah. that just says I'm an Italian amp, and I can't really say exactly what that is, but you kind of know. What do you see in this amplifier to to say that? For let, 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 let me go in the front. Let me go in the front. Something about the front panel. Okay. Does. It says to me, this is an Italian amp. I can't really say exactly. I mean, obviously, this is Dietzelisch with the cutout. Yeah. The, the knobs are Bogneresque. Yeah. You, you, you got the best of all the worlds, really. We try, we try to make our best. And of course, being inspired by the, the greatest, you name one. And yeah, correct. Uh, that, that is, that is I'm, I'm feeling here, that's very ni very nice cutout of the front panel. We spent uh, so much time also on aesthetic and on the look of the amplifier. We care a lot about this. It, it, it looks like a hybrid high gain amp. So, uh, so that means I'm definitely very curious about the low gain stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is Borgner. The B1, the B2 in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Borgner stealer, man. Come on. <laughs> Hey, you're stealing from the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reinhold, we're sorry. <laughs> if you need, you need to steal from the best. <laughs> it, yeah. it look, uh, so let's let's talk. I mean, yeah. we, we, we can't hear it right now. And obviously, even if we could hear it, we're hearing it at a trade show. Yeah. The only way to really test this. And people get, get on my case when I'm saying, you know, let's do a review. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to actually create networking and get you guys videos. It's not me begging for free shit. <laughs> Shut up. Um, this has to be tested in a studio situation. What's the price point on this? Uh, they are wait, wait, we're not even in the picture. Wait, wait. <laughs> price point. With Italian VAT, we are on 3.4K. Okay. So it better be fucking amazing. Absolutely. You will hear later then. Okay, I will definitely test it. Absolutely. It needs to be ecstasy VH4 BE100 level. Whatever. If it's any less, then this is not, no, come on. Whatever you, you name, we have no fear. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Luca's confident. We played, we are uh, players. First of all, not that good, but we are players. So we, we are like uh, gear nerds. We try everything. We love amps in general. So we know the, the level of our competitors and we know what they, they, they use in terms of components, transformers, something like that. So we put very, uh, so much time in finding and fine tune everything we need and we like. So that's the perfect resume of what uh, it should be a, a multi-channel amplifier according to us. Okay, I'm very intrigued, I'm very curious yeah. and uh, we shall check it out. This is very interesting. 
because this is literally my cable. This is exactly the cable that I made with this cable and this plug. <laughs> it's like we are at my studio right now. Okay, this how we could miss this relationship. See, you know, this I, di I didn't like these guys before, but now, <laughs> now we're best fucking friends. <laughs> okay. This was it from Red 7, somewhere in Italy, handing out animals at the end. <laughs>